Hello GearFax friends, prepare yourself to be unimpressed because this is the base MK962SD keyboard. It doesn't really appear in the first instance to offer anything special. It's not marketed as offering anything special. It's essentially a Kmart keyboard, just designed to be used as a toy. Looking at the front panel though, there do seem to be some features that are worth exploring. First of all, the drum pads on the bottom right. Not velocity sensitive, of course, but some of the sounds are actually not bad, particularly those two bass drums. They have a pretty nice thump to them. On the other side is something strange, master volume. Up and down like that. Up is on the left and down is on the right. Usually with home keyboard controls, it's the other way around. So that was instantly a little bit confusing. Also notice that the numeric keypad over here is one through to nine on the bottom right. And you've got minus down low and plus up high, and that's actually more logical than usual. And you've got a zero between the two vertically. That's bizarre. I mean, it's not a problem, it's just different to everything else. Over here we've got the piano-shaped instant piano key, which is of course completely ripped off from Yamaha. Then we've got our rhythm select button. And here, this is good, we've got instant access to sustain and vibrato. So there's our ordinary piano sound, and we can sustain that and add vibrato. One touch and we can have either or. So that's nice to have instantly available. Over here these funny shaped buttons allow us to record a chord progression as well as a melody and down here in the middle we've got our start stop button for rhythms, demo button, the sync key which allows us to begin the rhythm as soon as we begin playing, tempo control, accompaniment volume and a couple of functions that make no apparent sense. There are a hundred rhythms and some of them are very interesting with names such as Barrel House, Karen Kong, Turkey, Cantalp. But there are some more familiar types too, so let's try some out. First of all, this is our blues beat and I think you'll find this quite amazing. Let's turn up the volume. This is literally it. This is blues apparently. Yep. Moving on from blues, let's try metal beat. Okay, so it seems pretty obvious that the rhythms have no relationship to the names at all, and I think that was made pretty evident by the bizarre names of some of these beats. By default, our accompaniment is off, but we can turn on single fingered or fingered mode. Let's try single for the sake of getting a basic impression of what our accompaniment sounds like. This one is just called beat two. have no fill-ins to make it interesting, no intros, no outros, nothing. Our timbres, numbering 100, seem to follow the general MIDI pattern, basically speaking, but it does end on one called Erho. Can't wait to hear what Erho is like. It's actually not a bad sound. And yet you can select one like 89, which is supposed to be the crystal sound. Sounds like some horrible digital banjo or something. Crystal is something that we're normally used to hearing in the basic lineup of sounds on home keyboards, and it's generally much more impressive than that. Let's try atmosphere. Is there really any atmosphere in that sound? I would say no. It's just terrible. The one after that is called Roders, R-O-D-E-R-S. Let's try that one. You see, that's just a piano sound. So clearly it's only got 20 to 30 sounds and they are repeating each other at various stages in the sound list.
notice that sustain and vibrato stay on, doesn't matter what sound you choose, they'll always retain their settings. Actually a reasonably decent string sound there. Let's try vibrato. Okay. So it seems there's more diversity in the sounds than I first thought, but it's definitely not an impressive set. The back is nothing special, we've got a sticker flapping around in the breeze here. Power in, headphones, and a left and right out in RCA form. A mysterious dead socket there, and it can run on D-sized batteries. I feel like I should at least try to play something proper to give the MK962SD a fair hearing. Let's give it a go. Well, I think we've heard enough to reach a verdict that the base MK962SD is rubbish. Really, it's a classic example of why anybody who's interested in music, certainly anybody who's got a little bit of experience already with music, should stick to the specialist brands. Stick to people who know what they're doing. This brand, base, no reputation, nothing. Certainly nothing in this bag of strays to impress anybody. Just one other little niggle, and this might be just me, but I feel that the SD at the end of the model name kind of implies that somewhere you can put an SD card into this keyboard, and you most certainly cannot. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching Gear Facts, my friends. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Please like, comment, or subscribe. Send all the hate messages that you like, and I'll see you on the next one.